top five mistakes that I see people make as a fertility doctor when they are trying to get pregnant. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. And every day I see people who are trying to get pregnant and sometimes people are inadvertently doing things that are harming them or they're not making the right choices. So this quick video is going over top five things that I see that I wish people were doing different or mistakes that they are making on their journey trying to get pregnant. If you are new here, thank you for joining. Please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, and asking comments below. We pull from these comments in future videos. And quick note, you can pre-order my book, The Fertility Formula, which is a guide to taking control of your reproductive health. This is available right now at nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book. And if you do order, you'll get pre-order bonuses, including a hormone guide, the IVF course if you're doing IVF, and the pre-release book club, which has monthly modules and also live Q&A calls. So go and learn more. Okay, friends. Well, trying to get pregnant, so often people are really unsure what to do. And even when I tried to get pregnant myself, transitioned from preventing pregnancy and being on birth control to just stopping, pulling the goalie, doing a 180 and expecting to get pregnant without really knowing what to do or giving much thought about it. So if you're trying to get pregnant or you want to soon, I want you to think about this and hopefully not make some of these mistakes that I commonly see. Number one is going to be not understanding your cycle, tracking the fertile window, and knowing when to have intercourse. I see this when often people have been on hormonal contraception in the past, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's not harming your fertility, but it doesn't allow you to learn how to really track your cycles. And then we stop without knowing what to do. So first of all, in my preference that you stop contraception three to six months before you want to get pregnant so you can have time to follow and track your cycle and then learn when your fertile window is and see if you have any problems earlier, you can get them evaluated. So not stopping your contraception early enough, not tracking your cycle. The best way is to track your cycle. It's more than just marking down cycle day one. That is really important. But then what I want you to do is learn to listen to your body's own clues and signals. So some of the top ways to do this include basal body temperature, cervical mucus monitoring, and you can also do ovulation predictor kits or OPKs. And I do a full videos on what we call fertility awareness methods. This is leveraging your body's physiologic signs to help know when you're ovulating. They're all based on the principle that as an egg is growing, it's making estrogen. This estrogen is going to change the cervical mucus. So type four cervical mucus, that sticky, stretchy egg white is associated with peak estrogen levels or the day of ovulation. That high estrogen talks back to the brain. The brain sends out a surge of LH or luteinizing hormone, which allows the follicle to rupture and the egg be released. That is what you're checking on the LH strips or the ovulation predictor kits. I recommend you use those one time per day, starting before you expect to ovulate between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And when you see a positive, understand that's the LH surge and ovulation should be the next day. And then your basal body temperature or temperature tracking is based on the premise that when your body makes progesterone, which happens after ovulation, that follicle ruptures, egg is released, follicle reforms, it then makes progesterone and progesterone does so many things, but it does elevate our core body temperature. So your progesterone rises after a confirmed ovulation. So it's a confirmatory test. But you can leverage these to know when you should have intercourse. The egg only lives for 24 hours. The sperm can live for up to five days. So ideally, we want you to have intercourse before and then during the ovulatory window. Mistake number two is going to be ignoring egg and sperm quality. And let's emphasize sperm quality because I see a lot of men who are taking testosterone prescribed to them maybe for valid reasons for low libido, having low T levels, but remember, testosterone and sperm are made together. So if we are taking exogenous or external testosterone, we are therefore telling the brain that we have a lot of testosterone. The brain then presumes there's sperm too, and we downregulated the hormones that are sent from the brain to get both testosterone and sperm made. So this is a huge mistake that I see, and even in people who want to get pregnant or don't understand, sometimes the azoospermia or low sperm count from T use can be irreversible. So it's very important to please, please not take testosterone. 
Similarly for male factor, another important thing that I see often is cannabis use. Cannabis use can be really detrimental to sperm production, sperm motility, and sperm quality, damaging the DNA inside the head of the sperm. I even see IVF outcomes dismal when the male partner is using cannabis, even if the female partner is not. But stopping this can completely change sperm parameters. The sperm life cycle is three months. So sperm quality is important. So is egg quality. The general thing here is that chronic inflammation and insulin resistance are harmful to your egg quality. Your egg does a lot more than just carry the genetics inside of it. It also has mitochondria, has to have the right competency. We know this is why even genetically normal embryos don't answer the full picture. So we really need to think about our metabolic health. So prioritize sleep, try to eat an anti-inflammatory diet. We need to strength train and build muscles, manage stress, and avoid toxins. So these same principles are important for egg quality and sperm quality, but I see a lot of times these mistakes on sperm and really just an avoidance of sperm health in general or not focusing on what we should be doing there. Number three is gonna be waiting too long to get an evaluation. Sometimes this is because it's what society tells you to do. Sometimes it's just because you didn't know any different. Infertility is defined as not getting pregnant after 12 months of trying if you're under age 35, six months if you're older than age 35. We can have a whole discussion on how I hate this, how I think the field of fertility should be more proactive. We should do more proactive testing, that it's very reactive, exists to solve a problem, and it doesn't make sense in today's world of increasing rates of infertility. We should be practicing more preventative care where we are looking for problems earlier. But that's a different discussion. What we know is that that is the longest you should wait before getting a fertility evaluation. You can ask for testing at any time, and you should ask for testing if there's problems, meaning if your partner has low libido, difficulty with erection ejaculation, has been diagnosed with low testosterone, had testicular surgery, get a semen analysis. If you have irregular cycles, you don't have regular cycles, you're not sure if you're ovulating, you have a lot of spotting, you have really painful periods, you bleed through your clothes, these are all red flag warning signs. If women in your family go through menopause early, if your cycle length has changed and it used to be long and now it's shorter, if you've had two pregnancy losses or more, these are all reasons why you should not have to wait any set amount of time. So again, in the perfect world, we're tracking our cycle earlier. If we have those abnormalities, do not pass go. We're going to get an evaluation sooner. Number four is going to be really following all advice you see online without thought of who it's from and over supplementing, trying to do everything all at once. I think the important note here is that it's really easy to be called a fertility expert or specialist online. A true fertility doctor did four years of OBGYN and three years of reproductive endocrinology fellowship. That does not mean they're the only person who can give you advice. There's a lot of people in the space, you know, acupuncturists, naturopaths who have got a set of information that can be highly valuable. But anytime somebody just calls themselves fertility expert, fertility specialist, hormone expert, you need to know what their credentials are and that they're qualified to give you the information they are. Also, when it comes to supplements, it's not a more and more approach. I do think that in general, I would love it for everybody to get more of their nutrients through their diet. This is gonna start with a fiber-focused diet, high in fruits and vegetables, but there are some supplements that I want everybody to take. This is gonna include a folic acid, a vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, CoQ10, kind of as my core. And then depending on your circumstance, magnesium, melatonin, NAC, there's other things that might make sense for you, but not for everybody. One mistake I do see is taking too much biotin and not being aware. Biotin is a B vitamin and it can be important in um, cellular growth. So it's very popular in like hair, skin and nails vitamins, but it actually can bind to steroid hormone assays, which means that it can change the lab result of some of your important hormone values. So especially if you have infertility or you're going through fertility treatments or IVF, we want to be able to trust those labs. So no more than 300 MCGs, micrograms of biotin, that should be the maximum amount that you're taking. And then number five is going to be carrying the emotional load of infertility or trying to get pregnant alone. Please pull your partner into this. Communicate openly. If you have appointments, please try to schedule them when your partner can be there. It is not fair for you have to relay all the information, meaning you might get bad news. You have to have a game plan, go tell your partner, they ask questions and it puts you in the middle. So if you're going through infertility, please have your partner be present for everything they can. Even if they have to phone in, I'm fine with that. Also tell the people in your world who can show up and support you because they can't show up and support you if they don't understand or know what's happening. 
You don't have to tell the world, but it really can be helpful for you. And then consider getting additional support, whether it's through therapy, a support group, following people in the fertility community online who can be so supportive. You deserve not to be carrying this burden alone. Fertility is so isolating. I've been there myself and your emotional health matters just as much as everything else. Okay, friends, I hope this video helped you. Please ask other questions you have in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast, which is a deep dive into fertility. Here on YouTube, you can watch these episodes now. Follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD and pre-order the fertility formula. Thanks, friends.